Welcome back, everyone, to the fantastic world of Emacs and org mode. So today, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some ways that I was uh, kind of improving my workflow. I was thinking about getting more mileage out of the uh, the, the to-do list feature, or if you're into GTD, a uh, what they call a next action list, which is basically a list of things that you want to get to that are sort of one and done kind of actions that uh, may or may not be associated with a, a particular project, but basically just something that you jump into and get done. It's the single step versus something like a project, which is you know multiple steps. And um, so basically org mode is, is great for this because you can quickly capture these actions uh, while you're working or wherever you are. And uh, you can check the, just open up the list whenever you want. So but one of the things I was thinking about is that um, one of the difficult things in Emacs is not so much all of the functions and the key commands and the system, but just deciding uh, how you want to use all of these structures. So what are you trying to get done? What do you need help with? And how do you want to use what is sitting in front of you? As I said, I wanted to improve the next actions list so that it would be something that I actually wanted to use. As you know, if you've created a, uh, a to-do list in, in org mode, uh, sometimes it, it can be just a wall of text. And if you're a more visual person, uh, there are ways that you can kind of improve that. So we'll get into some of that. So one of the things that tripped me up when I was like first trying to figure out org mode and how you can do various uh, systems inside of it like GTD was I was always trying to nest any next actions that were associated with a project under the actual heading for that project. And you really don't need to do that. That'll actually be more confusing in, in a way. You can actually keep the list of actions separate from the projects and you can just trust that you'll figure out what they're associated with it's actually you know it's not that difficult to see that when it, there's a certain action listed there you know what project that's associated with and as i said it can be more visual so let's take a look at uh, what we can do so basically uh, to demonstrate this i created a basic file called gtd just a plain text file in the home directory and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add some some next actions to this list and we're going to use these uh, emojis up here uh, as to-do items. So uh, as you normally would see in Emacs, your basic to-dos would be literally writing, you know, something like to-do. And then, you know, over here you'd have something like done. Those are the most basic to-dos. So you'd come down here and you'd have an action, you know, like... Uh, uh, take out trash, let's say, and that's a to-do item. And then, you know, when you're done with it, you move it to done. So now when you actually, oh no, we're not gonna use that yet. So when you actually have these to-do items, and let's say you open it up in your, your to-do list, so you see it's there. If you have a lot of these, you're just seeing, you know, a lot of, a lot of text, and you can use tags to differentiate, you know, which, uh, you can kind of give context to different uh, items in the to-do list. But as I said, it just becomes a big wall of text. And you can make it a little more dynamic, particularly, as I said, if you're a more visual person like I am, uh, that's where I figured you can kind of use some of these uh, emojis here. And if you're not familiar with how to get to those in, in Emacs, it's uh, it's pretty easy. You can, if you have emoji fonts installed, you can do meta x uh, insert dash char for, for, or for character, car, whatever you want to pronounce it as. And then you've, you've got uh, a lot of not only emojis here, uh, but you also have like uh, Greek letters. Like if you want to put a lambda or something, you know, you've got basically all of the different uh, characters and Unicode characters that are available to you. Uh, you can kind of pick whatever you want. Uh, so I picked out uh, some different ones here that are for, you know, different contexts. You can kind of mix and match them. Uh, let's refresh that, CC, Control-C, Control-C. And uh, so let's start uh, categorizing these. So um, uh, I'll just put that little ox on here because, like, taking out the trash, that's like, that's like some, uh, some chore 
that you would be good appropriate for an ox i think i don't know if there's something i wanted to look into like let's say oh i want to do some research on a new laptop let's say um i would put the the eyeballs on that so that's like oh, i want to look into that so i'll put the the, the looking uh, symbol there and let's say I needed to uh, return something that someone might be waiting on, like, uh, you know, returning a book or something. Then I would put the the uh, fire symbol on there because that's like, that's pretty important. You know, you want to, that's like somebody needs something from you. That's like putting out a little fire. You want to get that taken care of. So already you can kind of see that there is a little more color uh, happening in here. Now let's say I want to do something something technical like uh, for my website or something like that like uh, update nginx config actually let's do that as a capture item so let's say let's say I'm doing something else in Emacs I mean a different file I can do control C control C and do an N for next action and I automatically put it on the little imp there just to indicate that you know just to make sure it has a to-do state because the to-do list will grab anything that has a to-do state and um i'm gonna put the i'm gonna put the droplet on it and say update nginx config so that's for my website capture that now it's captured it went into the little gtd file and when i open the to-do list you'll see here it is and of course it, so let's say i have a bunch of these and i plan on doing some some website updates and I only want to see those items I can do 7r because it's it's the seventh to do state and then that will only show me you know items that are related to the website so uh, honestly if you had you know a lot more here you'd kind of see a list I've only got one at, at the moment and then you can clear it with uh, 0r so these are all, all the to do items all right, so this is you can see that this is just a um, an easier way of kind of categorizing your different to do states, and of course, um, so as I said, like anything you're doing in org mode is about you deciding how you want to use these things. So typically, to do sequences are organized um, as literal sequences. So you might have something like um, you know. So we might have a sequence like um, idea, uh, you know, first draft, second draft, uh, editing done or something like that. So these might all be different states in a actual sequence. So when I use these um, these emojis here instead, they're not necessarily a sequence. They're they're more like um, categories. And uh, that's fine if you wanted to to do it that way, uh, but again, I've never got much usage out of the of the sequence. There was a time when I was using it a lot at work, but um, I found that that level of of granularity wasn't really necessary. And often, particularly in in what I do with 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 writing, you kind of go back and forth between steps multiple times so you might be you know drafting and then editing and then going back and forth and you might have to go back and outline a little more or do more uh, you know brainstorming so so for me personally having a um, a, a literal sequence was uh, was not always uh, helpful so I thought this would be a fun way to kind of play around with it and use to do states as, uh, as icons instead of uh, instead of as literal sequences um, and then, you know, as you, uh, as you can, you can guess when you're done with one of these. So let's say I took out the trash control C control T. You can, um, go down to, to capital D here, mark it done. Uh, let's say I, I looked into that new laptop, decided not to get it. Uh, I can actually, I can put the D on it or I can put the B, which, um, you know, I, some some people will call it a a boneyard, you know, something you might want to go back to and, uh, and dig up later. I can put the B on it, since so it's in the boneyard, you know. Uh, and then those are both done states. So if you hit R, it'll clear them out from the the, the to do list. And then you know, if you ever wanted to go back and review things in the boneyard, 
uh, you see it's on uh, it's on number 10 here you can do 10 r and your your bone yards will come up and if you want to review things that are done so maybe you want to archive them you know you can you can take a look see what's going on and you can control c control x a uh, and you, you can archive it ah cool so um so there you go so yes as i was saying basically um you decide how you want to use all these different uh features and you know options and systems that uh, that org mode gives you you can use them in any way that you see fit it's really up to you and you don't have to do things in one particular way these are general purpose tools so i hope that is something that uh, will get you thinking about how you want to use this stuff and uh, if you have any comments or questions be sure to let me know uh, i'm going to leave the video right there and i will talk to you all next time